throughout this test match, when India really were the best team for four days of it, well, three and a half days of it, England have come back and dominated and won the game. That's cricket. Now, there will be games and there will be innings where we are 20 for four. I've no doubt about it. I really haven't. And it's happened a couple of times this year. But they keep, we keep coming back and winning. Johnny's biggest problem, and I've known Johnny. I played with his dad many, many years ago at Yorkshire. I've known Johnny since he was a little, little baby. I held him in my arms. Um, so he's always been someone who needs to feel want. He wants to feel wanted for that Coley to start scoring runs. He got two good deliveries this Test match. I mean, the second innings delivery was an absolute. Nobody was that. They got Tendulkar out. <laughs> so that was an unbelievable uh, delivery and he did well to nick it. Well, talk about acing a chase and England have done that, levelling the series 2-2 of course and we have Dan Goff who called correctly and who always of course was going to be talking about the basketball and here we are in the post-match review scheme of things. Before we get to Goffy, here are just some facts to savour if you're an English cricket fan. The highest chase by England in Test, the highest chase by any team against India, the second highest chase on English soil, the eighth highest chase in Test history, and the first time a team has chased 250 plus in four consecutive Tests. Now, if that doesn't please you as an English fan, I'm not sure what would. Darren Goff, we'll start there. How ecstatic on a scale of 1 to 10 are you, Darren? Come on, England! What a performance, eh? When we talk about basketball and we talk about India, how good they are as a test team, in fact, how they're good they are full stop at cricket. Um, they came into a series that they dominated really last year um, before COVID interrupted it. But coming back, playing against a totally different England team, an England team that are full of confidence and somehow would never ever, throughout this test match, when India really were the best team for four days of it, well, three and a half days of it, England have come back and dominated and won the game. That's cricket. I hope we're seeing, I mean, in the summer is quite remarkable with the scoring rates and the pitches, which we'll get to. But be honest with us on, uh, well, where, where was it in the test? 109 for three, they're chasing 378. Did you think that England would get home the way they did? Did you think India would have probably fought more? How did it really transpire the way it did? Oh, well, the chase was, it was all down to the start against two quality performers in Bumrah and Shami. When you've got Lees and Crawley, who are both under pressure, as far as the media are confirmed, to keep their places in this England side. Though they're the only two players that are under pressure. The way they came out, 19.3 overs, century partnership, uh, the quickest for England, under that sort of pressure. Zach Crawley, nicking off for fun, when anything's outside of stump driving. He took that out of the game. India didn't attack that area enough uh, for me against him. But what a start. The momentum suddenly was with England. But then India come back into the game. This is why we love cricket. It changes all the time. A little bit of brilliance here and there. And then, whenever you've got Bairstow, Root and Stokes to come into any batting lineup, you back yourself to chase anything. And that England team never, ever doubted they were going to win. They never, ever doubted. Yeah, there were records galore, not just for Bairstow and Root, but... England, like I touched upon earlier. Now, where did it go wrong for India? I know day four was something that they look back in hindsight and be like, you know, maybe you should have extended that lead to 400 plus, given the fact they got a 132 head start. Uh, was it the bowling? I mean, you're, you're the best person to ask you about this. I mean, we've been seeing a theme off late since that South Africa series as well, where they lost by seven wickets and not to forget it, it's Baston earlier as well. Are they kind of losing steam in the fourth innings? What, what do you attribute to that down to? Um, I, I think it probably does come a little bit down to inexperience of Bumrah. Um, I think he did a lot of great things in the game. But you've got to remember, this is the first time he's leading his side against a team that are full of confidence. So I felt for him a little bit. And that's why we talked about it would have been a big decision to give Bumrah such responsibility in his first test. But he stood up well for most of it. But there were certain situations where you have to nail down a game. India were dominated. 250-odd lead. All they had to do were bat a couple of hours and it was basically, were, were, you know what I mean, that morning session, some of the wickets that fell for India were atrocious. Thakur getting caught out with three men out on the leg side boundary. Um, I mean, what was he thinking? He was hoping he was going to clear it. It's not a T20 game, it is a test match. Yes, you want to be positive. Yes, England have been positive. But you've got to assess the situation of the game. Pant played a poor shot, although he was brilliant in this test match. And Pajara, Someone you put your house on 
once he gets to 50, he normally goes on and gets a biggie. Well, he has been doing in county cricket this year for Sussex. But he threw it away with a poor shot, unlike Pujara, to, to get out uh, in the way he did. So they put gave England an opportunity uh, to get back into the game. Um, which, but England attacked, didn't they? With short pitch bowling. Uh, they really went out the uh, the Indian tail. We saw it didn't work to bum in the first innings when he got all the broad um, and kept hooking him, top edging him for runs. But England stuck to that plan. They believed it was the way to bowl India out at uh, the tail end. And then they just went about the batting, the way they've batted all summer. Mm. Let's talk about the pitches then, especially in summer. You were just hinting off it off camera in terms of how flat it's been. What did you make of this pitch? Because normally in England you get stuff for all kinds of people, spinners, pacers, batsmen alike. This one, Ben Stokes was pretty adamant about chasing and it turned out to be the right decision. Yeah, I think w w what I will say is that being involved now as director of cricket at Yorkshire is but the pictures I've seen in Division 1, there's been so many runs scored and you're never safe because with heavy roller and the weather we've been getting in, the, in England at this moment, it's been decent weather, good weather, the pitches have been flat. It's been really, really hard work for the seamers, the spinners. There's no room really dominated. Division two, it's slightly different. Uh, the pitches have been a bit friendlier. They always are because people are trying to get promotion. But in the top division, the pitches have been flat. And the average scores have been around 450, 500. They've been run score galore. Um, and it were no different there at Edgbaston. It was another fantastic pitch. All the tests have gone five days into the fifth day. And that was flat, wasn't it? It looked like it was going to go a bit uneven yesterday, but another every roller on it for England, and it was flat. Very mm. flat. Well, look, let's take the pitch out of the equation, because at the end of the day, England have made a statement, not just in that series against New Zealand, but even in this one-off test against India. They're going on to say to the other teams, they watch up, because we're here to play some sort of cricket that we haven't seen before. How much... Will other teams fear England in due course of time? I know South Africa are still yet to play there. This is something that many fans would be looking up and sitting up and taking notice big time. Oh, absolutely. I think um, teams now playing against us are playing against a totally different England side. The mindset is totally different. I think I mentioned um, to you last week, and England's mentality going into a test match was old-fashioned test, test cricket. It was to try and bat well, first innings, bat long, get a score of 420 plus if you win the toss and bat. Um, and then you've got a chance of winning the game. Now, that is the way Test cricket's been played forever and ever and ever and ever. Now, McCullum comes in alongside with Stokesy and they say, no, we're not going to play that cricket. We're going to believe we can play a brand of cricket that takes Test match cricket, makes it exciting and it sets, sets the benchmark. Now, there will be games and there will be innings where we are 20 for four. I've no doubt about it. I really haven't. And it's happened a couple of times this year. But they keep, we keep coming back and winning. We keep somehow, when we look totally out of the game, find a way to win. And this test match, after three and a half days, India were 90% chance of winning that game. The tactics were a bit negative. Field set out give England too many easy ones because they were scared of getting it for four. But that's what it does to you. That's what it does to you. That mentality of play where you're looking to hit boundaries and really change that momentum, India had no answers. But there will be occasions, and it could be against not the strongest team, it could be against one of the weaker teams in Test cricket. But England having off day, I think it will be a shocking off day. I really do. <laughs> I think it could be like 80 all out, just the way they play. Yeah, you said in the preview that they'll have some amazing days and they'll have some terrible days, but so far the latter hasn't prevailed. And from an England perspective, hope that carries on in terms of the World Test Championship because they have plenty to catch up on that regard, right? Let's just finish this test match review scheme of things by asking you a couple of individual questions. And I want to talk about a man who's been in scintillating form. He was imperious in hinting about Johnny Besto, 600s in 2022. What has changed for him since the turn of the year, Darren? Being comfortable, um, being wanted. Johnny's biggest problem, and I've known Johnny, I played with his dad many, many years ago at Yorkshire. I've known Johnny since he was a little, little baby. I held him in my arms. Um, so he's always been someone who needs to feel, want, he wants to feel wanted by his team. You might have experienced a little bit in the IPL uh, with Johnny as well. When, he, when you really give him his wings 
and say, just for you, Johnny, go and play, you will get an unbelievable player. And I think he's got all the shots. He went through things in his mind when that negativity was there. Is he going to keep? Am I batting seven? Am I batting six? Five, four, three? Um, he never quite knew where he stood. And I think a good decision, actually, this test match, although it didn't get Harry Brook into the side, was to give the gloves to Billings. Because the easy decision would have said, Johnny, can you keep in a one-off test? And we'll put Harry Brook in at five. But that would mean, again, you're moving Johnny Bairstow. They're going to keep him now as a batter at five and just let him keep scoring runs. And um, he seems really, really happy in himself. And he talked today uh, about how hard it's been for him in a bubble, uh, for all cricketers, to be honest, um, over the past two years. But now we're coming out of those stages and hopefully it continues. The crowds are back and we've seen the best of these players. We've seen their true personalities shining on a cricket field and that's what we all want. At times it felt like he was playing PlayStation out there with the shots that he got and he was just really taking the make out of all the Indian bowlers. Brad, if there was a bright light for India, it had to be Rishabh Pant, the man that you touched upon earlier. Now, many fans actually want to know why he kind of plays so well in Test Match cricket compared to T20 internationals. Is it because of the fact that he can dictate the game much more in the longest format and there's certain plans set against him in the shortest format? How do you kind of draw that disparity? For you know, um, I wouldn't look too deep into it. I think he's a serious talent. Um, how can you not enjoy watching him bat? Um, absolute delight against some high-quality bowling, by the way. You've got, just look at England's bowling attack. You have got two guys there, Broad and Anderson, who have got nearly, what, 1,200 wickets between them in Test cricket? Ben Stokes, who's the most underrated Test bowler out there. Potts is learning his way. But that seam attack is as good as he's going to get, other than Australia. And he played so, so well. And there is no way Pant will not get runs in T20 cricket for India in the next three, four, five, six, seven years. He will dominate cricket. He's got such a talent and there'll be no boundaries are big enough. He hits the ball so long. Yeah, I mean, some of the shots were just absolutely brilliant. And in terms of his ability to replicate that success across formats, only time will tell. Final one for me then. Biggest takeaway or learnings for... This Rahul Dravid team, so far what they've played eight tests in the Rahul Dravid era, they've just won four, but more importantly, they've lost three, which would really matter, two to South Africa and this one. What's the biggest headache right now from a test perspective for India? Well, I think a big one, let, let's be fair on this. Roy Sharma missing at the top of the order was a big, big miss. Um, yeah. It really, really was. He needs his um, best player, Virat Kohli, to start scoring runs. He got two good deliveries this Test match. I mean, the second innings delivery was an absolute... Nobody was... That they got Tendulkar out. <laughs> so that was an unbelievable uh, delivery. And he did well to nick it. Um, and with the ball, um, he's got to find... Somehow, for me, when Jadeja and Ashwin are in the side together, I find India very difficult to beat. But India's problem is now they've got so many good young seamers with a couple of good young seamers as well in the T20 side. It's very hard to play them both. Many, many years ago, India would have always played two spinners. But I think they're finding it difficult to drop one of their seamers to get Ashwin in as well. Now, Ashwin, you put Ashwin into that side alongside Jadeja, and I think it's I think it's a different, different story. OK, let's see how it really unfolds for India. Remember, they have six tests remaining in terms of the World Test Championship cycle. Uh, this time around, two away to Bangladesh and then four against Australia next year at home. So, watch out for that. We'll see how that story transpires. That's all we have in this review with Adan Goff. Catch us for the T20 International preview shortly. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back soon. Until then, watch a lot of content on Cricket.com. <laughs>